Well, hello everybody, it's Jeff Gibby over at Metastack. I hope you're doing well today. Uh, we have a very special guest, um, uh, Rahul Mohindar with us. Uh, let's get going. So, um, to, we'll start with your favorite part. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastack and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators of features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So I do want to say a few words about Rahul uh, before we get started. Uh, Rahul is probably one of the people that uh, that even before I started working directly with him has influenced my trading the most. Uh, his his RMO system that's actually built into Metastock is the first system I actually started to trade with. And uh, it's a class that I've taught probably hundreds of times, I guess. Um, but in any case, to tell you a little bit about uh, Rahul, uh, Rahul runs a business where he trains students in India. He's been an extremely successful dealer of ours. And he does a lot of panelist discussions on CNBC, CNN India, all that kind of stuff. Um, he, uh, one of the things I like about Rahul is he has a, a very, very good way of educating. Uh, you're gonna notice when he's talking to you tonight, uh, that he really breaks down um, and simplifies a lot of concepts uh, and makes them very, very approachable. So I think that's all I'm gonna say, Rahul. Uh, I can hear you. Uh, do you have anything to say for yourself? Well, uh, thanks, Jeff. Great introduction. Well, thank you so much, uh, friends, for joining in today. Uh, to give you a bit of a background and to extend on to what Jeff was uh, mentioning, uh, yes, I have been an active trader for probably two decades now. And uh, Besides being the panelist on Bloomberg and CNBC and all of that, I think one of my core beliefs is trading is a very individual business. Trading is something which is very personalized and trading and analysis is something each one of us needs to understand for ourselves. Uh, I'm not someone who would try and drive you to an advisor or to sell you an advisory service or to tell you to go uh, hard buy a certain black box model. I think I'm here to kind of help you get rule based, help you get more channelized in the approach. So I think today's discussion is, is going to be a great one. And uh, I think the idea was if we could focus our webinars more to a particular market, you would be able to relate to it. Yes, it would certainly also help in terms of being at a more sane time zone. Hopefully we're not keeping most of you up at 3 a.m. <laughs> but uh, and the only time we we'll refer to Apple and Google is when it's a mobile device. But it's all about ASX symbols today. It's all about showing you up to date examples. Uh, with the Australian market data and help you uh, get a glimpse of how I would use the RMO and ATM uh, with uh, the ASX symbols, which I practically do. So uh, without further ado, Jeff, I think it's time we kick it off. It's all yours, Sam. Thank you. So let's start with my first model, which is the RMO system. The RMO is available inbuilt of Metastock. So I'm going to first discuss the inbuilt RMO. And then I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about the ATM, some of the key strategies. I don't know if I'd get time to get into all. There's quite an extensive set of them. But uh, uh, there are a whole host of webinars I could point you to at the end of things. But I will definitely show you three or four solid models that I personally use with the ATM uh, along with the built-in RMO system as well. So let's look at our regular market and that's a bare bones chart that I've put up for you here. You'd notice that most of the time we're looking at uh, a market that's going up and down, having different peaks and troughs. And if you look at the areas where I've marked a rectangle, you can see that's a patch where the market suddenly starts congesting or gets sideways. So it's important for us to uh, understand that the market's not always going to be a straight line up. And we as active traders all understand that. 
uh, we need to understand there's going to be phases of profit booking, there's going to be phases of consolidation, there's going to be phases where it's absolutely choppy, and we need to be able to survive with clarity uh, of trend in these scenarios. When I say clarity of trend, one needs to understand at all times in which direction is the long-term trend, in which direction I should be trading in. So that was the whole idea of building in something like the, the RMO system. And the RMO is the Rahul Mohinder oscillator that's included inside of Metastock 10 and higher. So if you right-click on your chart and apply template, you'd find a template there called RMO trade model, and that's where you would be able to access this. So the idea is to give you an indicator or an oscillator in this case, which identifies the primary trend being something that smoothens out your data. So in other words, if you have a, an XJO or a, a stock that's keeping on going up primarily, it should help you stay in that positive direction or positive trend till it sinks, it's in place. Now, if the RMO is above zero, we conclude its primary trend up or long-term up. And if the RMO is below zero, we talk of it as RMO negative. So let's dive into a quick example to start with. If you look at this chart here, we have the green histogram up on top. That's the RMO indicator. If the RMO has been above zero, we've been bullish. If it's been below zero, we've been bearish. So you can see with good consistency, I've been able to be on the right side of the trend. It's not a top picker, it's not a bottom picker, it's a trend follower. It's there to help you confirm that an uptrend is in place and now don't confuse yourself uh, in terms of going in the reverse direction. So if you can see this area, which is probably a little drop that you saw in the last 20, 30 bars on the chart, you can realize that that's a point where you want to be clearly so I'm really referring to this whole bunch of bars. And that's an area where you understand that the market's still positive, this is more corrective, and we want to use every correction as an opportunity to buy this market and not sell the market. So what's the idea behind chasing a primary trend? The idea of chasing a primary trend is to help us increase our odds of winning. So in other words, if the trend is up and we're going to try to keep on buying, we're definitely going to be have, having more winning trades than losing trades. It's important to trade in the right direction, in the direction of the stronger force. We also have a focus of the big picture, which means if you want to actually hold the equity and you know, you're, not just, you're not just buying a call option or maybe a derivative of that stock, you have the possibility to hold through it for the long haul. Now, a lot of people ask me, how do I define long term? Again, this is a very variable topic because in a room, if I had different people, someone would say long term is a month for him. Someone would say it's a year. Someone would say it's five years. So it's a very variable answer one tends to get to this question of what is long term. So I define long term as 60 bars, six zero bars or greater, right? So we're looking at at least hanging in three months, considering you have 20 trading days per month on an average, we're talking about three months of data on a daily chart. But if I looked at, let's say a 60 minute chart, then we're talking 60 hours of trading, right? So it's the number of bars that I'm relating to when I say primary trend or long-term trend. So 60 hours of trading would not mean beyond 10 or 11 trading days for the ASX as you're open approximately six hours if I'm correct. Now, when you look at charts, we also need to focus on a certain time frame that you are comfortable with. I'm not someone who believes that you should be oscillating between different time frames. One of the biggest problems, what I find, is that traders are jumping between a daily and a weekly and a monthly and an hourly. There's too much of a jump. I need you to recognize what is the correct time frame that works for you, what is the correct time frame that you can mentally tune to 
What is the correct time frame that adjusts your trading profile in simple words? Because unless we don't find the correct time frame to trade in, it's going to be hard for us to succeed because those people who are jumping between a daily and a 60 and a weekly, and they're keeping on moving between time frames, you're never really realizing your true potential. You're never really realizing the uh, absolute uh, return of your system because you're constantly oscillating between various systems. So it's important for us to recognize that there has to be one root time frame. In fact, a lot of times when people come to a lower time frame, it's usually because they're losing money on a trade or go up to a higher time frame because they're losing money and they're trying to see, oh, you know, the weekly is okay. It doesn't matter if the daily got stopped out. That's a complacent attitude to have towards trading. And I can tell you with the 20 years that I've been in the market uh, and I've actively traded the ASX markets and still do, it doesn't make sense for us to use so many different time frames. It's important we focus on one root time frame and instead have indicators which can handle the long term and the short term, right? So stay with one time frame, but stay with systems that can dynamically read short term and long term. And the RMO does that for you fairly well. So now that you've got a hang as to the fact that, you know, what's the primary trend of the market? I'm just looking at the green oscillator on top. If that's positive, I'm buying. If it's negative, I'm selling. Above zero RMO, I'm gonna be buying. So if that's out of the way, let's get down straight to some core rules for us to go long and short. So while you go long or buy, you always wanna look for a buy arrow, a blue colored bar, and the RMO being above zero or in bullish mode. Again, all these three different elements come up automatically when you apply the RMO trade model template, right? So if you right click apply template, RMO trade model, you would see arrows, bars being colored blue or red and the oscillator on top. What's the idea of these arrows? The arrows read the short term trend, the bar colors being red and blue read the medium term trend, and the RMO being above zero or below zero reads the primary or the long-term trend. So the idea is to have a dynamic template which is handling the short-term, medium-term, and long-term elements of the trend. And where do we want to buy when all three sink in, when you have the three of them uniting into a positive strength mode you want to be buying? So if you have a buy arrow in place and then you see blue bars coming in and finally the RMO being above zero, when these three have synced in, you can go ahead and buy that stock because we expect a good run up on the equity. S similarly, if you wanna go short this market, you're gonna be looking for sell arrows, red bars, and the RMO being in negative mode. So let's start with a chart of Woodside or WPL. And this is a daily chart, uh, which is up to date. And you can see back in March, where I've got the solid blue vertical line plotted somewhere around that 25th, 24th of March area, where you have the first time it's become a blue bar. And if you look up on the RMO oscillator, we've also gone into a positive mode, right? So the minute you see that happening, you are going to be looking at buying the market above the high. The reason I said above the high, because the simplest test of strength is when you buy strength, it's above the high. If you're bullish on something, buy above the high of the market, of that bar. So likewise, you can see I've got three more dotted vertical blue lines. Those three are also buy signals. And there's a reason why those three are dotted vertical lines. You have uh, a blue bar, a buy arrow and the RMO bullish. A blue bar, a buy arrow and the RMO bullish. In all cases, we wanna be buying above the high and they all seem to have worked out pretty well. But the reason why they're dotted line is they're secondary signals, they're later signals. I like to actually call them as add-on signals. They're not really the primary or the root or the first signal. The first signal is around that end March area. That's the best and most meaty time to buy the equity. You're not gonna be focused on looking for the second and the third and the fourth. And of course, as you can see, the second was decent, but the third was lesser and the fourth was even lesser in terms of return. So you wanna keep 
keep your stress on looking for the first, if not the first, maybe even the second. But I don't want to push myself looking for the third add-on signal and the fourth add-on signal. We want to be focusing on working with primarily that first breakout, that March end area from the first time it goes from red to blue, when the armor goes from negative to positive. The first signal is what you're looking for. And trust me, you get these very often. You can scan for these. We've given you explorations inside of Metastock and uh, that's definitely gonna help you run through it. Now, let's look at the sell side of things. And this is a chart, uh, uh, where you can see the market's been primarily dropping. And I've taken a patch in the uh, in NAB and where you can see that uh, the market went negative mid-March where you had the first red bar. So from blue bars, you transitioned into a red bar. You get the sell arrow up there and the arm also goes negative. Now, notice in this example, all three have come in on the same day. Blue's gone red, the arrows come in, and the armor has gone negative. All three have happened simultaneously, which is great. But it doesn't always have to be that way. It could be that the arrow came in four days later or four days earlier, right? We're looking for the point that they all sink in. So just rotating back to the previous example, you can see in the buy scenario in Woodside, we got the buy maybe around the 19th or 20th of March, and then the blue bar comes in around the 24th. When you get the blue bar, you also get the armor bullish. That's when it all sinks in. So it didn't all happen in one day. You got the arrows beforehand, which is the short term signal, then the medium term and the long term later sink in towards that 25th March area, right? So it doesn't have to happen on the same day. If it does, great. If it doesn't, uh, we're still gonna take that trade with equal importance and weight. So when you look at the dotted lines again, that's a second add-on. So mid-April and mid-May, you again have arrows, red bar, red arrow, armor negative, red bar, red arrow, armor negative. You can take these as add-on signals. And whenever you sell or you initiate a trade, I like to keep that simple confirmation of sell below the low. So mid-March, when you get that sell on NAB, you wanna be going short below the low of the red bar, below the low of that bar, which is around that $29 mark. We're not gonna be selling it at any other point, unless it breaks the low, we're not fired, we're not triggered. Like you can see over here, the importance of that trigger, the importance of that confirmation is so uh, relevant. You can see momentarily the armor went from bullish to from bearish to bullish. You can also look at the x-axis strip right at the bottom. So if you look down at the x-axis, you can see that little green window that appears uh, early May. And you can see the arm was turned positive, but the high of that bar, the high of the blue bar is not taken out. Whether you talk of it as this blue or this blue, the highs of the breakout bar are not taken out. So you may have got a buy signal, but it's not triggered. It's not fired into that buy trend. So realistically speaking, that downtrend that was fired around the $29 mark in mid March is still running right all the way through June. Now we'll talk about exiting, but I think it's very important that we start entering correct because otherwise the debate about exiting doesn't even come up. We need to focus on having the right exit plan once we get the right entry plan in place, right? So when we are trying to look for sell signals, I wanna recap, we're looking for a red bar, a red arrow, and an armor being negative and ideally when it turns for the first time. From a bullish armo, it turns bearish. From blue bars, it turns red. That's the first signal we're looking for. The second and the third signal, quite honestly, I don't even take them. I'm more interested in just hunting down where can I get a first breakout? Because the idea is not to give you a large quantity of trades. The idea is to give you a high quality of return, a high quality signal, because we're going to be chasing better returns that way. So just to reinforce that whole concept of buy strength and sell weakness, a very old concept, but the way I use it here is if you have a sell and you can see I want to sell below the low of the bar, if I have a buy 
In other words, blue bar, buy arrow arm or bullish, I want to buy above the high of the bar. Like you see in the, that circled area over here, you've got the red bar, the RMO is just trickled below zero if you look up at the histogram or the x-axis, but the low of that bar is not fired, it's not taken out. And that's as good as no signal. If you haven't fired, you haven't really moved to the short side of things, right? So bear in mind, selling below the low or selling weakness is an important confirmation. Similarly, when you buy, we want to buy above the high of that bar, right? So stay with that focus of having that little confirmation. Stay with that focus of having a first breakout because that's how you can increase a lot of uh, depth in your trade, increase the profits on your trade. You want to make sure you get the correct and the truest signals because I don't want you to be randomly going in and chasing down every single arrow. I want you to be finding out where have I got a first breakout? Okay, and, and this is another great way to do it is to look at the volume when you get a signal. So if you've got a blue bar, like you can see in the circle data, I've got the blue bar, I've got the armo that's run up positive, I have the arrow which came in two days back, so I'm all set up. I have all the three things, bar color, blue arrow, RMO positive, and I have all the three things. I'm gonna buy above the high, and it does kick off the high, but it doesn't work. Now, why did that happen despite being a first breakout? Notice that the first breakout doesn't have even above average volume. When I say above average, I want it to be about 10 to 20% higher than average at least. Ideally, you want more, but you know, at least be slightly above average. The idea being that think of it this way, you're thinking that a big long-term trend is gonna push out from here, but there's no money and there's no interest in that stock. Volume is a direct uh, relation to the amount of money that's involved in the stock, right? So we don't have enough money in that stock, enough interest in that stock. Why are we trying to chase this down so heavily? Look at the buy signal that you have here. When you have it mid-August, you have the red turning blue, you have a buy that's triggering, and look one or two bars around it, you have some nice good volume. So typically, wherever you get the signal, look plus minus two bars at least, and see that do I have some bars or a majority of those bars above average volume. If that's not happening, that's not a great signal. But if that is happening, you've got the signal and you look plus minus two bars, you can see that there's some nice solid volume, you can go take that trade because volume is a major driving force. If you don't have money, how's the trend going to be breaking out, right? So that's a great way. So I've just taught you how you can make those RMO signals so efficient by consulting the fact that is it a first breakout and am I backed with above average volumes when I get a signal? A lot of times you'd save yourself from signals like this, what we typically call a whipsaw. You get a red bar, it's got the red arrow, the RMO is bearish, but when you look at the volume, look two bars behind, look two bars forward, no money came in, no above average volumes, I don't want to take this kind of a trade, right? I'd rather miss it than compulsively take a trade. So trade on your terms, trade on quality, trade on the first breakout, trade on stuff that's packed with volume. Now coming to the risk and the exits, that's an important aspect. We often get the question as to what if the stop loss feels very large? And just to tell you what's the ideal stop. If you're buying, I like to minimum try and look at where the immediate swing low is, or if you wanna simplify that, look at the five bar low and place a stop. So the question is, what if you have identified a perfect first breakout, it's got all the confirmation, you check the volume, you wanna go ahead, but what's stopping you is the fact that, look, the five bar low is a good four or 5% down and that may not be a stop that you're willing to take or doesn't agree with your risk management. So there are two options you have here. Really, there's a third option too, if I could say that don't take the trade is one option which I haven't written down here, assuming we all are traders and we'd like to jump at high quality signals. The second option we have is, do I tweak my stop loss? Do I tighten or raise my stop? I would suggest not to do this. The reason why I don't want you to raise the stop from the five bar low is we've tested the systems all keeping in mind that five bar high or five bar low stop. So when we say that it's 60 and 70% accurate on reading the long-term trend, we've clearly looked at that five bar low stop as a concept. Similarly, when you're looking at 
the next choice, which is tweak your entry. So in other words, if I've got to buy at $35 and I have to keep a stop at 32, and maybe you say that's a very big stop, all I can do is I can tweak my entry. Maybe I buy a smaller quantity. Maybe I buy if it drops a little bit. And I think that's a more realistic approach to this where you are trying to take the trade because it's a high quality signal, but you're also being mindfully clear that I'm not going to be just risking the whole amount of money. So tweak your entry if at all you feel the stop loss is too large on the trade. So here's one clear example. That's the point where you get the buy. So I've marked that out here. The five bar low is nice and low down there. So you could identify somewhere halfway between your stop and your entry. So you buy a little bit above the high. And the reason why I would buy a little bit above the high, let's say I buy 50% of my trade above the high. What if it doesn't come down to the midpoint, right? It just races through because it's a high quality signal. You are definitely going to be participating. So buy half your trade right there. Buy another half if it drops down somewhere into that midpoint. And you can see this thing really had that drop. The RMO is still bullish and boom, it dropped down. And that's a point where you can buy the other half. Now you may or may not always get that other half, but very often when we buy, we do see a few bars that trickle down. And that's a good time to kind of average out and get in again. So break your entry up above the high and somewhere at the midpoint, but don't change your stop. Your stop's a stop and stay with that trade, right? And, uh, you know, just going into that, what really happened was you bought the market up here, it dropped a little bit, you got in at the midpoint and, you know, up you went again. And don't worry yourself with these little patches of red that come in, because remember, they're no good. The red bar low is not taken out. Besides, even if you see that, look at the volume on it under average. So don't stress out seeing that. Once you've taken a trade, your stop's your stop, and you're gonna be staying with that, especially if it's a first breakout. So that's for the stops being exited. Now there are more exit models. There's an indicator called the exit swing indicator or the exit swing signal. That can be used very well for profit taking. So if you've entered a trade and you know, you're know you visibly into good profits, when I say good profits, usually I'd like to see at least four or five bars going clearly up, up, up after buying or four or five bars down, down, down after shorting the market. You can definitely start using the exit swing signal. But I'd caution you to start using it only after you have run into a substantial profit. And when I say substantial profit, I give you a hint there by saying five bars clearly up or five bars clearly down. But if you want me to help you define that even further, let's say you've got at least 2x ATR uh, from your entry point. That could be a point. So don't use the exit swing signal unless you've started trending clearly favorably up or down in the direction of your signal. Use the exit swing only after that. That's what we'd use to trail our stops. And for those of you folks using the Armo ATM2, we have the trend decider levels, which I'll also talk to you about in a bit, which can be tactically used for entry, re-entry, as well as exiting. So we'll talk about trailing uh, when we discuss that in a bit. But just to give you a quick overview of the exit swing signal, it's the histogram right up on top. You have a red line, which indicates overbought a blue line at 25, which indicates oversold. When you see it rotating down below 75, you want to be exiting below the low. So if the market breaks the low, notice the low is not broken. This is a very important concept because don't just exit because you just saw it. You want to confirm it. You want to make sure the low gets taken out and that's when you exit the equity. Otherwise you keep holding on and you know you keep lifting your stop and trailing through. That's very important. So I often get the question is, okay, Raul, you've taught us the RMO and you've taught us the importance of the 3D buy or the 3D sell. When I say 3D, the three-dimensional buy is really when you have the buy arrow, the blue bar, and the RMO bullish. So through the power screen, and you can see I've put all uh, Australian equities up on this list, you can have an RMO signal, and then you can also have the super filter for those of you folks who use the ATM. But it'll tell you where you have a 3D buy or an up arrow or a new blue bar. So all of that gets sorted out through the power screen, and it's an automatic process. You don't need to run a scan. It just scans 
live for you during the market. So even if you use end of day data, you can use the power screener to just automatically pop up with signals. And remember, it's fairly effortless. I'm not even asking you to run an exploration. But for those of you who like explorations, we've given you the integrated buy and sell scans. And for those of you not on the ATM, we've also given you individual scans for finding out where you have a new blue arrow, where the RMO has gotten to bullish zone, or you've got a new blue or red bar. So we've given you all the facilities to scan through, and again, fairly hands-free process with the Power Screener application. So for those of you who have the ATM, you also get this Power Screener application, which scans for all the different ATM signals, as well as several other basic studies live as the market ticks or end of day if you use end of day data. So the ATM power screener is a great tool to be using for opportunity detection. The idea is it can even give you voice and email alerts so that you never really miss a trade. You cannot say that, hey, I didn't look at it or I didn't open that chart or I didn't run the scan. It is gonna voice it out as to buy this stock or sell this stock because of XYZ symbol. Okay, so it's gonna find out opportunities for you exactly as you want. And remember, it could run off a five minute chart, a daily chart, a weekly chart, just anything you want. So we'll, we'll talk about that further as we conclude. But you have all the tools for trade identification so that you don't miss a single trade when it's a first blue or first red uh, or more breakout. So the 3D buy and 3D sell is what you'd really refer to in the power screener and the integrated buy and integrated sell is what you'd look at, right? So all you have to do is examine the, the few results that you get out of that and pick, you know, the ones which have the best confirmation. In other words, you may say, hey, that's a first breakout. That one has a greater volume. I want to go with that one. So you can further shortlist that way uh, by looking at the chart. So the important pointers I've given you today is you want to make sure that you use the first breakout, not the add-on breakouts. You want to use filters. In other words, you want to buy above a high, okay? You want to make sure that you don't unnecessarily look at too many time frames. You want to make sure you have one root time frame. Remember, the RMO is already looking at the short-term, medium-term, and long-term elements. You can do a further integra uh, indicator integration if you need to, but uh, if you're someone that likes using Fibonacci, no harm if you do that to get a gauge of support resistance. But again, these are not must-haves. But volume as a confirmation is a definite yes, because without volume, you're not gonna drive into a big trend. So keep these important pointers when you use the inbuilt RMO system. Now let's talk to you about the ATM now. Now the, for those of you who are unaware of this, the ATM or the automated trend modules is an add-on available inside of Metastock, which I've designed. And the reason I designed this was I wanted to have a system that's more dynamic. And a lot of users said, you know, if we could have a system that self-adjusts, and that's something I've always enjoyed doing is to optimize a, a indicator for a particular stock. So let's say if I used a moving average and I used a 30-day moving average, for example, if I apply that to every ASX symbol, the performance is going to be very different. So, you know, there may be uh, X percent accuracy if I used it on a particular stock and on another stock, it could be a very dramatically different accuracy. The idea is if I could have indicators that tune up to the stock that you applied on. So the ATM does precisely that it uses its intelligence to look at the volatility of the symbol and then apply different values and optimize it for that stock. So it's kind of tailor-made for that stock rather than just applying a standard or a static value for every indicator. So when you look at the super filter, what we've done is we've broken it down into different colors. You'd see orange colored bars, red colored bars, light blue and dark blue. If you recall earlier, we just had red and blue in the original RMO system. But with the ATM RMO template, which is what I call the super filter, you have four different colors to help you gauge trend strength. For example, if you're in dark blue trend, it tells you in a fairly fierce bull market, right? And don't hint yourself to exit this market because you're in a strong trend in place. But likewise, light blue is as good. It tells you you're still bullish. And why do I call it super filter? The super filter tells you that, look, even if the RMO is negative, which you can see, and this is a chart of A2M. This has been one of those active boys. And um, you can see how A2M, uh, when it rallied up about three weeks ago, and this is an hourly chart uh, on A2M, 
A2M milk. You can see over here, the armor went negative, but this was still light blue. The bars were still light blue and that saved you. So the super filter comes in and backs up the original armor and says, hey, if I have to use the optimized version, it's still telling me nothing's changed. So stay with the buy trade, stay with the bullish trend. And that's very important. So you can see how it's right through the month of July and August, it's helped me stay in that downtrend. And then from mid-August, it, it's helped me maintain myself into that bullish stance that's very important. So uh, I think this is an hourly chart up to date until yesterday. And uh, you can see how it's helped me stay in that trend nice and comfortably. So the super filter is there to help you, you know, look at an optimized version of that armor and give you a better feel of trend quality, right? So when you see dark blue bars and you see the armors just turned up, you know, around that 13th of August, 14th of August, those dark blue bars, that's definitely a solid signal you wanna be taking. And when I say take a swing low as your stop, you wanna use this low as your stop when you're getting in there or use the five bar low, which may be this, and you stay in that trade. Right. So and all the way you can see it's dark blue, light blue. So you get saved from a lot of chop this way. So the idea is to help you understand the transition of trends as well. The four bar colors are very important because they're filtering out the original RMO and giving you really an optimized piece of information. Look back on this chart in December 2016. You had a little bit of an armor going from bullish to bearish, bullish to bearish. That whole chop is taken care of with blue and, and, and dark blue bars. So you're not really changing the trend so easily. So it's able to uh, smoothen the data out for you. And at the same time, you know, a lot of people told me, look, basically all that means is you've got a slower version on the bar colors. No, it's not a slower version. It's an optimized version. It's something that is, adjusting to the price chart. So therefore it had to slow down and stabilize the signals here. But look over here, back here, it's, it's you know, it's sped up and given you a sell signal, the red bars, it's not even orange, it's a dark red. So you can go ahead and take that sell trade to start with, or at least exit all the longs that you may be into, despite the armor being bullish. So the armor is gonna take its time to turn, but you can see in the optimized indicator, it sped up and helped you exit much quicker and, and concentrate on the short side of the market. So the super filter or the ATM RMO template that I give you is a huge refinement. It's a lovely optimization on that RMO uh, indicator. And you know, here's some more examples to back it up. You've got a sell signal on the RMO and look here, you got light blue that saves you from the chop. So you stay intact, right? But when you get dark red and you see the armor negative, you say, hey, that's the time I wanna go. Similarly, you get the light, the dark blue coming up, uh, you know, with the arrow, which is when the armor is negative. So you got a first hand signal, it gives you that early indication of trend change without the armor even turning. So it's not that the ATM armor bar colors are slower they could be faster if they need to be and they will be slower if they need to be notice over here it was faster by giving you a dark blue bar when the armor was a negative zone and notice here you've got the red maybe 10 bars later than uh, when the armor turned negative so the idea is to have something which is tailor-made or adjusted to that equity right so here's another example this is a a, a chart of the uh, index the uh, xjo uh, the 200, if you look at the whole patch between June, July, August, September, that's been a phase where the market's been really negative and choppy. It's really not broken out. And if you look at the XJO during that July, August period, particularly end July to end August, you've gone from red to blue, green, you know, you, the armor has gone from bearish to bullish, bearish to bullish, maybe four times in and out. But that's the fun when you use the optimized ATM super filter template, it's helped you say, hey, this is all orange and red. Even though you got the light blue or the dark blue bar there, the high is not clipped out and therefore the trend was intact. 
When it was light blue and the armor went bullish and both synced in, that's the time when the market set to break out at that 57, 50, 5800 area. And that's really the timing which you need. And that's where we fired up all the way. So as you turned into dark blue that further confirmed things and you got rolling. So it's important to see that if in a four month patch of sideways markets from mid May to end September, it helped me stay in one direction and didn't give me any chop. That's a great thing. I'm not saying that it'll always save you from every bad signal, but if seven out of 10 or five out of 10 of the bad signals even get ironed out, you're automatically increasing your strike rate. And more than increasing your strike rate with the bar colors, you're also sensitizing yourself in terms of trend quality. So the ATM RMO has been right 75% of the times, even on an equity like Rio, which has so much of chop. So when you look at Rio Tinto, you're, you're looking at, uh, you've got the buy signal that comes in all the way back in July 2017, and it's just been blue bars all the way through until uh, March of 2018. So you had a bit of chop there. We had a sell that comes in, and that's the only signal which didn't work. But then in the main, you look at the four different lines that I've drawn out, we've had a clear trend, clean up trend, clean down trend from July 2018 till now. So you can see three, three out of four of those signals are nice and accurate. And this is one years of daily data, more than one years of daily data. So if in 13 months, or 14 months, you're really on the right side of the trend, what more do you want? Because when you have the RMO being bullish, you are really concentrating on where to buy this market. When you have the RMO being negative from July of 2018, you're really being focused on where to go short on this, right? So it's important we understand that the trend clarity, the directional clarity is so immense when you use something like the ATM RMO signals. So the whole idea is to smoothen out. So you can see more data over here, a lot of chop in the price, but when you look down, the RMO is flipped from bullish and bearish, bullish and bearish. That whole thing's lined out when you see just one orange or red color. So it's beautiful to have something do this whole filtration process out. For those of you folks who are new to this, you can also refer to the comprehensive commentary that comes up in the ATM RMO template. So it would look at things like the breakout catcher, the SWI, there's a whole host of different indicators which it would refer to. So commentary is also available in that template. Now the other ATM indicators I use every single day is the ATM Trend Decider Suite. I love these indicators. They're just fascinating uh, to use and I use them with the ASX symbols as well because uh, I find them to be so effective not just to help me trail stops but it also helps me understand where the support of the market is, where the resistances are, and where the trend is changing. So very quickly, trend deciders are divided into daily levels, weekly levels, and monthly levels. I am primarily gonna work with the daily and the weekly. I've kept the monthly there for those of you who are really long-term folks, but being more of an active trader, I'm someone who likes to work with more of the hourly charts or the daily charts. I don't try to extend into very high time frames. Uh, I like to look at these indicators from a daily and a weekly perspective. So the trend decider daily looks a bit like this. It's a simple green line. And this is a chart of, again, the XJO 200, where you can see a 10 minute chart. And if the market's trading above the green line, it's bullish. If the market breaks the green line, it's bearish. So every day I have a new green line that comes up, right? So it updates every single trading day. So the trend decider daily is gonna update with every trading day and travel with you. Because as a day trader or as someone who's even holding the equity, you wanna know, okay, if it's broken my trend decider daily level, it's gonna be bearish for the day. So maybe you wanna get out and get in a little lower down again. So the trend decider daily helps me do that. So remember the trend decider daily, why is it called the trend decider daily? Because those levels are being extracted out of daily data. Whether you apply the trend decider daily indicator on a five minute, two minute, 15 minutes, 60 minutes, the level is going to be the same. The level does not change based on the interval of chart that you use. The trend decider daily is calculated off daily data. The trend decider weekly is calculated off weekly data. But let's say the one I really enjoy using is the trend decider weekly because this gives me a bigger horizon. So I can see that last week we moved above 60 to 70 on the XJO and that was the first sign 
that we're going to have a nice uptrend in place. Similarly, over here, the week prior to that, around the 21st of uh, August, when we broke down 63.20, we knew a slide is coming in. So the week is bearish. The week is bullish. This is amazing. The fact that I can see that I've crossed a key level for the week and the week is bullish. If I break down the, another key level for the week, I get bearish. So it gives you a very interesting, and it updates every week. So every Monday morning, you have a new trend inside a weekly level. So it helps you not just trail your stops, but also helps you understand where the key support of this market is and how to hold through. So if I plunk both these indicators on a chart of A2M now, you'll find uh, that's a daily level and a weekly level. I'm looking for two or three things. And, you know, this is where I need you to pay close attention to. If you find that the green is above the red, you're really in a bullish market. So you can see it's, it's automatically doing that for you. It's writing bullish at the baseline. So if price is trading above the daily and the weekly, that's a bullish signal. And the second thing I'm also looking for is, is the green above the red. So when you find all three are in sync, in other words, price is greater than daily, price is greater than weekly, and the green is above the red, that's a bullish breakout. And that's why it's marked bullish over here. So notice over here, we momentarily broke down the daily and the weekly level, but we never broke through the low. So we're still in an uptrend because you close below the daily and the weekly, but the low of that bar is not broken, so the trend is not triggered down, and therefore you're trading on the buy side. So it's quite amazing. You've got two months of hourly data in front of you on a uh, volatile stock like A2M, and you can see how you're really trending through. Green below the red, and you're maintaining short positions. You go up over here, you have it, again, Price is above daily and weekly. Green is above the red, but doesn't take the high out. So you're not going to be buying. So it's really kept you unidirectional in view. In fact, look at Macquarie Bank. Uh, green went above the red, and it's been bullish all the way through. Notice not even once. Uh, look at the x-axis. It's all bullish. And the reason why it's all bullish is because even though green comes below red, price is above both. Right. So what are the areas you're looking for? You're looking for when green goes above red, in other words, intersects. So that area, green intersects the red and price is trading above both. In fact, that uh, bluish line there is the monthly level. I don't use that very extensively, but added advantage here. You can see it's above daily, above weekly, above monthly and green is above the red. So you want to go uh, long on this market. Right. So even today, the run that you see on Macquarie is is all because you've got the trend decider continuing to keep you in bullish space. So see, it doesn't even knock you out. Even in this 20 bar correction, it doesn't green doesn't come below red. And the day it comes below it, the price is not below it. So you're really staying nice and solid and bullish because it's it's helping you stay with that trend. This is a chart of NCM again. And here, too, you can see how NCM broke the daily, weekly, and monthly level. That was quite an epic signal back there. You had a huge breakdown because, you know, you had green coming below the red. Price, you know, was below daily, weekly, and monthly, and boom, we had the big crack. And if you look at it, what's happening over here, you had a little bar that went above daily and weekly, but the high is not taken out of that bar. This is so important, friends. If we don't break out, we're not riding through it. So it's a great signal to keep in mind. These are more examples. That's BHP for you. You know, recently BHP went green above red. This was last week when we had uh, the breakout around the $33 mark, and we already hit 34 today. So nice, decent dollar run up that you saw. And this is an hourly chart. And on that hourly chart, I've applied the trend decider daily and weekly. So you can see where I've marked the dotted vertical lines. Those are signal points. Why is this a signal point? Because price is closing above daily and weekly, and the green has gone above the red. Why is this a signal point sell? Price is closed below daily and weekly trend decidal levels, and the green has dropped below the red. And this is also automated because it's marking it for you. You also have explorers and the power screener doing all the scanning for you so that you don't miss any of this. And besides, we've also backed it up further with commentary. So it's amazing how you can use uh, this tool for for stops, for re-entry. It's one of those tools I always like using. So if you like using it, uh, you know, if you're a sharp trader and you want to get in and out quick, 
every time the exit swing rotates below 75, I like to look at is the trend inside a weekly also broken? You know, then I can exit out and quickly get into a buy a little later on. Okay, so exit out, trend inside a weekly broken. So in these kind of signals, I really don't want to go short all that much because the RMO is bullish and the bars are still light blue or dark blue, but at least I want to exit, take some profit, get maybe a four bar, five bar drop and re-enter maybe. So it's a great tool to use. Likewise, you know, if the RMO is bullish and I've got the exit swing crossing 25, that's a good buy setup, particularly as that bar rotates into a blue color. So it really works in tandem. I like the trend aside a weekly you know, more because that's my trading style and my approach is more hanging on to trades for a couple of days and not, you know, months and months. So I'm quite comfortable holding through a week, two weeks, three weeks, uh, because I like to look at the immediate short term. But the combination of Trendicider daily and weekly is, is amazing. I mean, these are all Australian up-to-date pieces of data. That's NCM, BHP, Macquarie. We looked at a whole bunch of stocks and sectors there. But uh, let's dive further into this. So that's again, another example with NCM, where every time I've broken through that weekly level, if you're looking for that three or four bar run up, right? Cross the weekly level, three or four bar run up. In fact, it's given you more, particularly when the exit swing is crossing that 25 level, that certainly can help. Like here, it's rotating down from 75. You break the weekly level, you get the drop. So the trend decider level is quite a powerful tool to use. Another one which is totally based on volume is the SWI or the Strength Weakness Index. It's very simple. When you plot it on a chart, you can see bars which are blue and red color, and it's calculating a simple concept on volume. When the price goes up, is it going up with volume? When the price comes down, is it going down with volume? If you can see that the price is breaking down uh, and it's red colored bars. This is just an equation of volume. It tells you that the trend is down if the red colored bars and the bars are trading below that red SWI line. And remember, this doesn't even know what the price of the equity is. It's only calculating the fact that is the volume flow on the bullish side or the bearish side. So it's good to have an indicator just based on volume. And this is say uh, CBA, Commonwealth Bank, where you can see uh, price has broken through the uh, SWI level back mid-August and that whole drop comes in and recently we just broke out last week and we've started seeing that nice big surge. So this is just a view on volume and you can use, I don't use the SWI alone. I like to use it more as a confirmatory tool. I tend to use the trend decider more as a standalone, the ATMR more as a standalone, but the SWI is a lovely volume confirmation, you know, because that whole bit of calculating as to, you know, is the trend accompanied with volume, not accompanied with volume, that whole classic uh, equation is married into that SWI. So it gives you a lovely, uh, uh, you know, this is a daily chart of Woodside again, and you can see how even from a volume perspective, there's one solitary bar that breaks through, it doesn't break the low of that bar. So you're still really in that uptrend here too. So remember, you get a signal here, Low is not broken and you can bring your mouse to any point. And so let's say I pointed to a bar over here. It gives you the whole snapshot as to is the armo up? What's the SWI suggesting? So the SWI is totally a volume driven tool which works as a great add on. Now, all of this that I've been talking to you about, there are so many more different studies. There's the breakout catcher, there's the ATM RMO2, which I use for the option trade setups. And we're going to be doing next week a, a webinar on how to trade options with the ATM systems. So that's a good one to attend if you're someone looking at options. And, uh, you know, all the different indicators that I'm going to talk to you about or which are covered in the ATM are programmed into this power screener. So again, just as a reminder, when you buy the ATM add-on or the automated trend modules add-on, you do get the ATM RMO, the breakout catcher, the trend decider, SWI, everything that works. And you also get a different application called the ATM power screener that can scan opportunities for you on end of day or real time, depending on what data you use and spot those opportunities for you. So everything that I'm teaching to you is programmed so that you never miss an opportunity. And the best part about the ATM is it's got 30 different fields. So if you are someone who likes looking for stocks that are overbought on an RSI, or you also want the MACD signals or the moving average crossovers, even that's built into the scanners. So you can have 30 different kinds of scans that are running 
on hundreds of stocks of your choice on time frames of your choice and spot those opportunities for you. The idea of building such a scanner is so that it becomes a hands-free process. Come on, if I asked you to run 10 different scans every single day, it's a tedious process and it takes time. It's, it's also possible that you missed running it a particular day, but here when the application is open, it's already done the scan in, in seconds. It's automatic. And it's also shot you an email alert out or voiced an alert out for you. Uh, straight out when there's a buy or sell opportunity. So the Power Screener app is all included with an ATM add-on. For those of you who have it, I guess you already definitely use it. And for those of you who don't and want to try it out, uh, you should definitely use the Power Screener app for opportunity detection. So now I'm going to throw it open for questions. The idea was to just give you an overview. Again, don't limit yourself to just these three different strategies. But I want to tell you that there's a lovely manual that I've written up, which is going to be available under your My Downloads if you subscribe to the uh, ATM add-on. We also have uh, two masterclass recordings or pro classes that I've done which is in 2017 and 2018, the two pro classes, which are for users only access. So if you subscribe or you have subscribed, go ahead and look under your My Download section. You would have uh, uh, access to those videos as well. But now I'm gonna throw it open to questions and uh, uh, you know answer anything that you want me to and uh, close it down from there. So over to you, Jeff. Hello. So I don't see a lot of questions coming in, Rahul. But um, That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must have uh, made a lot of sense to people. Um, but if you do have questions, go ahead and type them in. While you're doing that, what I'm going to say, uh, or I'm going to go ahead and kind of take control of this back, and just want to take, uh, give you kind of an idea of what we're going to be doing with this. So you go ahead and kind of move this into a full screen view here. And uh, you should be able to see my screen. And I'm trying to expand it right now. So as Rahul talked about it, there's the power screen or part of the application that kind of allows you to track everything. If you use the Metastock real time, that's going to allow you to get real time data, uh, real time signals. It, it will uh, actually give you an audio alert. If you're at your computer, it'll tell you that something's going bullish on the indicators you've got it set up. And if you have a Gmail account, it'll also send you a G, uh, uh, an email as well directly to your inbox. So um, uh, in terms of the systems that are included, uh, Rahul did a really good job of covering exactly kind of the different systems. And what I like about kind of the systems that are included with ATM is you, you have your breakout captures, you have your trend detection type of uh, systems. Uh, in addition to that, you've got kind of reversals or counter trend systems as well. So there's a little bit of something for everybody. Uh, we do have a special offer at the webinar today. Uh, basically, what we're normally, if you subscribe to the ATM, you're going to get all six of those systems, and you're going to pay $129 a month for it. Uh, as part of the special webinar offer we're doing today, if you pay $99, uh, you can pay $99 a month for life. Sorry, it's about midnight here. I'm trying to I'm trying to do my best. But if you pay $99 a month instead of $129 a month uh, for basically the length of your subscription, as long as you keep subscribing to it, you'll you'll keep that $99 rate. Uh, we're also offering what we call an extended trial, and we've never done this with ATM Power Screener before. If you want to try out uh, the ATM Power Screener, uh, you pay $99. Uh, Rahul has agreed that will give you a second month for free, okay? Uh, in or you can also do an annual rate. The annual rate for it includes about a 10% discount. It's $1,069 per year. Uh, if you do do the annual package, you'll receive two one-on-one -on -one training sessions from Viratech specialist staff. So uh, to take advantage of that, uh, I know a lot of you are in Australia. The best way for, to actually get a hold of us is through our sales chat. So if you go to metastock.com slash sales chat, uh, they'll be able to help you with that. So let's go ahead and open up the question and see if we've got a lot of them or uh, see if we've got many. Uh, John has a question for you, Rahul. All right. 
So, John, I, I read your question is, what's the danger if the ARMA and the ATM uh, begin to lose effectiveness as they become more popular? Well, first of all, John, good question. But uh, one of the best things about the ATM suite is it's not just one indicator. Uh, as Jeff was mentioning, we've got tools which are there for the counter trend approach. We've got people who want to look at the ATM just for the options approach. So there are different studies right there. So it's not just one simple black box that you're using. A lot of you can integrate it, and I showed you how you can integrate it so well. For example, how I integrated the trend decider daily and the weekly with the exit swing. So they're all uh, great ways that you can combine it. And the fact that it's optimized, I really don't think you run that risk. So I don't think that uh, uh, that at all should be an issue. I think another way to look at it is if more people use the same system, it's probably going to work even better. So there's a flip side to it as well. But thanks, John. Yeah, if everybody's buying in the same direction at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it, um, one of the things I also want to add is this is one of our most popular, this is our most popular subscription add-on. So if you're thinking about picking it up, uh, this is a great way to get it at a permanent discount, $99 per month and get a second month for free. So uh, that's really all the questions we had, Rahul. Everybody must have understood exactly what you had to say. Well, fantastic. But Jeff, to add to that, we don't even do the ATM specials in the holiday calendar. So I think for those of you folks who've taken the trouble to attend and are genuinely interested in trying it out, this is really uh, the best place to get it. And uh, I, I want to, first of all, uh, thank each one of you to come in today for attending this webinar. Uh, I also want to credit Jeff for staying up this long and more importantly, credit Metastock and his whole team because unlike a lot of companies and programs out there, uh, there are very few of them who spend so much of time and initiative in educating users. It's not just about selling and providing stuff. It's about hand-holding you through a process, educating users on how to trade better. And uh, kudos to that. I really genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate this initiative. And uh, again, thank you for having me and thank you for all being there. Okay, you bet. Um, you bet. Matthew says, great presentation. Um, Gary Burton, it's good to see you. Good prezo. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, uh, Christer has one more question. Uh, he says, can you show how to screen the best signals? Any any kind of maybe high-level advice on that, Rahul? Okay, well, I think, uh, Chris, there are two or three pointers I, I give users. One is if you're starting out. Right. If you're at a beginner stage and you're looking at more trend following systems, my number one go to would be the ATM Armor, which I explained to you today, and the trend decider signals. I think these are are two which I use not just as a beginner, but even as a as an experienced trader, I, I continue to use these. And I enjoy the performance out of it because I'm really always trading in the right side of the trend. But as you get into options, and I don't know if you trade options. Uh, one uh, other benefit of using the RMO2, those pullbacks can give you some great options trading uh, signals as well as the counter trend indicator. So I think these are two styles, uh, two very different styles. You know, one is of a style of a trend follower and the other one of the counter trend is someone who's trying to top pick and bottom pick, which is more aggressive. These are two very distinct uh, models that you could follow. Uh, in your trading. So the best signals are really focus on those first breakouts, no matter which indicator you use, try and get in, in the front, try and look for that volume confirmation. That's going to be the creme dollar creme of the trade. Awesome. Uh, well, Rahul, uh, since everybody's thanking each other, I want to thank you for coming in and, and doing a class uh, uh, directly relating to the Australian market. Uh, we should do more of these. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everyone. Okay. And thanks for coming, everybody. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, we'll see you at the next one.